Hello everyone and welcome to this demonstration of GeoTime. We're going to be taking a look at a really interesting data set. Um, this data set is associated with a uh, hit and run homicide investigation where a taxi cab uh, was involved in a hit and run accident and then uh, took off from the scene of the crime. Um, what we're trying to do is to take a look at the, uh, the GPS data from each one of the uh, taxi cabs that was closest at the time of the accident. We can see the accidents displayed there in the red X um, in hopes that we can learn uh, which one of the taxi cabs was in fact responsible uh, for this hit and run accident. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take a look at who was closest to the scene of the hit and run around the time of the accident. So I've got my accident there and what I've done here is I've just put a timeline up as the vertical axis. So you can see we've got 1022 um, going down to about 1040. So time actually goes uh, downwards there as the vertical. And what I can see is where the taxi cabs were before and after the hit, this hit and run accident. Um, so if I take a look at the, uh, the salmon co colored uh, taxi cab line here, and these are the different events points that have been recorded from the GPS unit and we can see if we hover over that the different data that's been recorded. I want to actually do a measurement to see how far away he was around the same time there as the uh, as the hit and run accident. If I do a ruler um, tool what we can see is that at zero seconds away so roughly the same time as this hit and run accident uh, we can see that the uh, this taxi cab over here was 4.4 kilometers away so um, we're pretty sure based on uh, that distance that this taxi cab was not responsible so we're going to take them um, out of our uh, out, of, out of our investigation, out of our analysis here, and we're going to focus on um, these uh, remaining taxi cabs that are that are much closer um, to the scene of the hit and run accident. There. Um, so the next thing I'm going to take a look at is um, what was going on inside of the cab. So we were lucky enough to uh, to have data that included um, the cab status. So the cab status is a real interesting one. Um, what it does is it tells us whether the cab was occupied, so if there was a a passenger in the car, or whether it was empty. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make the uh, the color of these events different based on whether there was a there was an occupant or whether the, the cab was was vacant. And so any time that there's a uh, uh, a passenger in there, it's going to be blue. Uh, the event point will be blue. And any time that the cab is empty, it's going to be red. And so what we'll do now is we'll take a look at um, what was going on right before and right after um, our hit and run accident here. We can see if we take a look at the dark green uh, taxi cab here, I'll just highlight the line. We can see that there's a dark blue event before here, up here before, and then after the uh, the hit and run accident. If I wanted to make that really explicit, what I can do for presentation purposes is I can actually come in here and I can highlight those points so that um, somebody else who's uh, taking a look at that, if they were um, going to be uh, reviewing the work I'd done, um, they can see that uh, those uh, three blue points, which are before and after the hit and run accident here, um, all show that there was um, an, a passenger with that uh, with that taxi driver. So we're pretty sure that this dark green taxi cab was not, uh, in fact, responsible um, for uh, for the hit and run accident. So we can remove them as well uh, from our uh, from our investigation and uh, and that way uh, we don't have to uh, to keep looking at them they're no longer of interest to us so let's take a little look at the last two uh, remaining taxi cabs as part of our analysis and uh, with those two what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring an additional data set here so this additional data set um, actually includes uh, fares that are being called out from dispatchers so I've got a dispatcher out here um, you can see that he's in the uh, dispatcher office there and then I've got another dispatcher where I'm not quite sure the location, uh, but they are calling fares throughout the day. So you can see that these dotted lines represent um, calls over the service radio so that uh, they can contact the different uh, uh, cabs that are on duty. And you can see here's one that went out at about uh, just after 8.55 and um, it was a fare accepted call that was made to the uh, the, the blue uh, taxi cab there. So what we can do here is we can actually step through the different um, communications that have gone out uh, to the taxi cabs and uh, what we'll see here is that there was a uh, call made from one of the dispatchers to uh, to one of the cabs where uh, the cab didn't respond. And so if we continue forward, we can see that the next one, uh, that the next communication event that happened was a fare rejected from one of the taxi cabs. So that's a, that's a, uh, you know, a change in behavior because uh, these taxi cabs are normally uh, circling around the downtown Washington area looking for fares there. And we can see that one of these cabs is actually not responded and then he's rejected a fare. And uh, this, uh, this taxi cab over here in dark blue, uh, we can see that if we continue uh, the data set there looking at the GPS position, uh, we can see that uh, he becomes stationary at some point. So um, after the hit and run accident, he doesn't respond, then he rejects a fare, 
and um, he becomes stationary just outside of the downtown core there, so out in the suburbs, uh, which doesn't make sense for a taxi cab uh, in the middle of the day to be headed out to the suburbs and just sit there for a period of several hours. The result of this analysis reveals that the behavior of this taxi cab in dark blue here is most likely the, the one who caused the hit and run accident.